So I am not a religious person. So thus the idea of praying right does not ever really occur to me for I am pretty much kind of not religious. But if you ask Brock Hampton, that's a song by them called If You Pray Right. Now, I don't know the religious um, activities of the group, so I will not be talking about that. But <laughs> I will be talking about this song. And we get and we, we start off with Dom and we end with Joba this time. And the first thing that really struck me about this song was the eerie vibe that it, it felt. It had this sort of futuristic alien type vibe and their um their wear, their costumes sort of kind of imply that sort of space faring type idea where the one of the first ideas of what aliens could be is maybe they're these weird foil humans that look similar to humans. And the idea that if you pray right is something that could potentially refer to aliens. I'm not sure. It it really kind of depends on what religion you subscribe to. But pretty much the thing that really clicks to me is the idea of their slogan, take the odds, I'll keep dreaming, and sort of how it relates to this. Because I, I hadn't really touched on that in any of the videos prior. But what I want to touch on first is that and the fact that take the odds, I'll keep dreaming sort of pretty much says to for others to pretty much stay safe if you want to. I'm going to take this risk. I'm not going to let myself be swallowed up by fear of or um, statistics in any manner. And with if you pray right, that idea pretty much sort of relates in the same way where people believe if you pray right, you'll get rewarded instead of, you know, actually working hard. Um, a tweet that I saw kind of referenced this talking about the fact that, you know, I didn't really get what I prayed for until I started walking. So until I started praying with my legs and not my hands, I actually was able to achieve stuff. You know, it's sort of like the idea of wishful thinking. And so within it, I that was pretty much my initial thought on what the narrative would be about. And it sort of seems to be that way. And the eerie sounds soundscape seems to infer that there is sort of a sadistic nature to this sort of greed, this um, this avarice, this desire to really get rewarded without doing any work and sort of the the group's response to that and sort of what other people's response to be or maybe a God's response to somebody wanting to be rewarded without doing any work. So what makes this interesting is, again, the eerie soundscape and how it feels very like everything is staring you down. And watching the video, Joba's stare down was probably the most terrifying, and yet he had the funniest bar in here. But you have these horns in the background as well that kind of reside, and it, it sort of makes this like off-kilter energy but it all flows very well. They sort of use Matt again as a, not this time as an outro, but still a sort of catchy little hook before you get pushed into the next section. And what they do to split these sections up, what I really like, the sort of weird transition where it's kind of this pitch shifted voice, but it's completely distorted in the way that it's moving. And it sounds as though this voice is kind of like this lost idea that someone is trying to keep together and as you get moved through i guess like these sections of life maybe that's where that like that sound leads me to think like when you when you think of a deity you kind of think of this inconscionable being that could not be imperfect in any form and so trying to communicate with something of that nature could like blow your mind sort of thinking in the lovecraftian terminology where basically it's like they are so incredibly unbelievably insane looking that you cannot fathom them and so in that same breath that's sort of what i think when i think of those little transitions beyond matt's sort of 